Hi, it's Chris Watkin here and I'm with Mark Myers from Myers Estates and he is a franchise or with four offices uh, and five people working as franchisees. Um, talk to me about your estate agency franchise proposition. Talk to me. <laughs> Well, uh, Chris, we actually have, <clears throat> we've got six offices now. Six? So it's growing very quickly. Uh, what we did was we, um, we started off with uh, some pilots. And, when was uh, that? Uh, that was back in 2013. And what we've done is we, myself and my wife started our business out of our garage in 2011. And what we did was we... Were you an estate agent before then? Yeah, so a uh, bit of history was I started uh, in London, in uh, Foxton's. So I worked in Notting Hill, Foxton's. I worked in Mayfair, Foxton's. Uh, so I met John Hunt, Peter Rawlings. I did about um, about five years there, and I, I returned back to um, back to Dorset, and I worked in Countrywide in Manningco for for quite a long time. Ended up as who's the who was the, uh, who was the uh, regional director boss person? Uh, Louis Powell at the okay. time, and so Louis was my boss there, and. Um, all the offices that I ran, I used with sort of a Foxton's mentality, and we ended up with a leading brand in every town that I went to. But there was no legacy behind what I did. I ended up as a regional, and I didn't really enjoy that job. So um, me and my wife started my, our own business for, for our garage in 2011, just just saying all that people care about is the service. They're not interested in offices anymore. Okay. And um, off we went. So you started your own agency from your garage, so not on the high street, so you were almost pre-Purple Bricks, which was 2014, if memory serves me well, from a garage. What, how did that go in terms of not being on the high street? You were a bit ahead of your time at that point, weren't you? Well, interestingly enough, when I was at Foxton's, um, I handed my notice in in, in Notting Hill, and um, I can remember Peter Rollins asked me to stay. And they gave me a job in, this is back in 1999, in, in Mayfair, looking at... Um, ways that Foxton's could develop their brand and I spent time looking around London um, looking at other agencies and then I decided at that time I was going to start up my own internet agent because Foxton's had no visibility on the agent um, uh, no visibility this is pre right move this is two because yeah. they kicked in in 2000 that's right so in 1999 I opened an office in my own um, in my own house in Islington where I was living what still working for Foxton's or you I handed my notice in and um, I went to try and establish the first internet agency that you know that there was. <laughs> so I think I think there was no, no one else for that. But um, I just I just couldn't do it. Um, and the truth was, I had uh, actually a really powerful breakdown after a really bad episode abroad, and I spent two or three years um, with in clinical depression and actually had. Uh, a really tough time. What did you year. learn from from that episode in your life? Um, hope, when, even, even when there's no hope, there is actually hope, but you just can't feel it. And I learned that people are wonderful, and um, they want to see you succeed, and they want to see you survive. And many people who who would never speak of it have many more problems than you could have ever imagined. And so, uh, so, so you just got to hold on. And resilience is key, and time is the most important. Um, thing of all. Yeah. And what did you learn working for a corporate like Countrywide? Process. Um, a massive amounts of process work, training, and um, Louis Powell's exceptional manager uh, and uh, leader. And, and he taught me hope and belief in people. Um, customer comes first. At Foxton's, it was money came first, I believe. And um, uh, working, for, working for Louis Powell, it was definitely the client comes first, then the staff. And so he put things in the right order and then gave me the processes so that I could actually leave um, corporate world and actually start my own business properly this time. So how setting your own agency up in 2011, how did that go? Uh, within, a, within one year. Where, where was that, by the way? I was in Dorset. Um, okay. So it was in a little town called Dorchester, which is surrounded by fields. And um, it, 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 was, it was a massive success, basically. Um, I spent about nine months making sure it was going to be a success because I stripped everything we had down to about 26 quid a week, had three kids. Um, food outgoings were 26 quid a week, had a bike, that was it, sold the cars. And um, I just focused on service and process. Interestingly that you cut your expenditure out as opposed to trying to earn more money. You, mm. I think that's quite wise, isn't it? What made you do that? 
because um, when you bootstrap a business from nothing, um, I, I actually started to resent my, my, my existence as an estate agent in the corporate world. Um, Louis was made redundant, uh, which could, I could see therefore that Countrywide was going on its knees back in 2009, 10. I've been a really um, successful award-winning agent. I was making good money, but I wasn't getting any fulfillment left. So what I realized was if I bootstrap my business and I just cut away all overheads and I produce service, I can make a lot of profit. And that's what we, that's what we did. Within a year, our register was 160 properties and everybody wanted to copy the model. So what made you decide in 2013 to, do, to, to go down the franchise route? Because you could have opened up another branch, couldn't you? Uh, that's a great question. Um, I think we decided to go down the franchise route is because when, we, when I was going to start the business, I read um, a couple of books. I read um, The E-Myth by Michael Gerber. I read You Inc. by John McGrath. And I also read um, Stephen Covey, Seven Habit Habits of Highly Successful People and Napoleon Hill. And what did, the, what did those books teach you? So those books taught me that if I was going to start up a business, I didn't want to start up a business that was just going to be another siege mentality estate agent on the high street. Because I didn't have enough money to start um, an estate agency on the high street because I only had about 8,000 quid. Um, but, but I knew if I created service, I could do it. So I, as I built this business and I thought it was going to work, it took me nine months to launch it instead of about three. But then I launched it with an, inte with an integrity to start it up as a franchise of a franchise business but I was just going to do it very very slowly because I had little babies on the way and I had little babies at home and I just wanted to enjoy my time with them rather than make a great deal of money and open a massive empire so so I did it slowly so I created three pilots um, which were well considered pilots one was uh, somebody who'd never done it before one was an experienced regional manager who was who was obviously going to be set in his ways and the other was um, uh, a, an agency staff, a couple of agency staff members, so that there was a sort of person in each in each field. A high street operation, a hub operation, <clears throat> from your bedroom operation? All of them from the spare space in the house. So so I used a garage, uh, then within a couple of years I had I'd, I'd, uh, nearly 2,000 foot square, off, square foot hub. And uh, the guys all opened from uh, their spare room, their spare room, uh, their grandma's bedroom um, no longer occupied because we went to a care home and a summer house so they, those were all of our locations and whereabouts were those in the country they're all around Dorset <clears throat> uh, there was a lot of people who wanted me to help them start up as well because we were making good money and we were taking a lot of time out of the office and having good times with our family but frankly um, uh, the processes for starting people up weren't secure and it was very heavy on my time so I, I just said no to a lot of people. I just wanted specific pilots to run for three or four years so I could work out exactly what's going to work. Okay, so mm. you've, you've got these five offices. What, what, <clears throat> what have you learned in that time in terms of your relationship with your franchisees and their relationship with you as the franchisor? Oh, great question. <clears throat> so what matters the most, really, is, is the well-being of the brand, the values in the brand. So we have four key values. So... Everything that we run our business by now goes by we care, enjoy your journey, um, proudly reliable and genuinely professional. So anything outside those, uh, th those values gets removed from the brand, including people if they veer off track. So that with the processes that we need have created a brand which has got very, very high um, aspiration. Plus it has um, top 3% this year um, on the Property Academy Awards. Um, That's the best agent guide, isn't it? Best agency, yeah. yeah best agency guide and um, uh, silver in the negotiator awards for um, re for a state agency in the southwest. So we started to win awards. We did top five percent, top four now, top three. So it's really processes and the well-being of the values. And we do a net promoter score within uh, our business about how good are how good in terms of fulfilment our franchisees feel. Okay, so. That those, <clears throat> those are important words, but and, and you are upholding the values of your business. But what does that actually look like on a day-to-day, week-to-week, month-to-month basis? Okay. Um, so but, And let's do it yeah. from your point of view, yeah. looking to your franchisees, and then we'll reverse it and come back the other way. Okay, good question. So 
So first of all, um, our, our hub office is actually not really an estate agency, more of a training centre. Okay. So what, what it looks like to me is if you started with me, you'd have two weeks of training before you could even go out the door. Okay. One week is theory, <coughs> excuse me, one week is theory and one week is practical. So you actually go on the job, <coughs> you actually meet clients, you're getting assessed and you have to actually be signed off before you go out. We've got um, systems and process for, processes and protocols for everything we do. So I need to make sure that everyone knows all of those processes, protocols, and that they, they understand the brand, really. Okay. Okay, okay, so that's the training. What do you get ongoing? Yeah, so, um, so we do a quarterly mastermind, a quarterly um, awards and, uh, and league tables. Uh, we do uh, weekly one-to-one -one meetings, uh, which is half an hour with me and each person or one of my colleagues. Um, we've got a business development manager that meets every quarter to make sure that they're on track and see if there's any profit that we can uh, um, that we can eke out the business, any new ideas that we should be putting in, any challenges. Do you, do, do the franchisees ever come together? Yeah, um, we do a, a meeting together every quarter uh, okay. as well. So there's a lot of contact between the franchisees because okay. we're trying to Once use... Once a quarter all... doesn't sound a lot. Sorry? Once a quarter doesn't sound a lot. Well, we do a mastermind group. Uh, which is some of some of the um, some of the guys want to actually or ladies and guys want to be a part of that, and then once a quarter we sit down together and we do an annual um, event as well. But we have a uh, a weekly sort of one to one check in on numbers uh, as well. So there's a lot of personal contact and network contact, uh, which we find means that everyone feels they're part of a unified team all heading in the right direction. Okay, so what do the franchisees do for each other? Uh, they support each other. Uh, we've got, we use a lot of WhatsApp videos and groups. We share ideas. Uh, we share mastermind ideas. We have our own mastermind groups. Um, they train each other as well. So some have got strengths and weaknesses. So we're a very much a boutique brand. Uh, some things are really working very well for somebody. And so we pilot things for each other as well. So um, our HQ pilots um, key, if you like, key decision making um, systems like new processes if they work we roll them out but we've got a lot of very very intelligent and very successful okay. people in the business so they share ideas okay so is each franchisee responsible for their own right move and their own marketing or is that included within the fee and how does that all the, the pound notes work yeah so our fee um, is just turnover of properties only so if they make any extras on referrals and we're very big on suggesting people do. They can keep all that as profit. Uh, we don't take any financial, nothing. We just take estate agency turnover of properties and that's it. So if you're a really good agent and we refer sort of maybe six or seven different um, directions when we've got a property transaction. Then when you say refer, we're talking about FS, <clears throat> conveyancing. Is that what you're talking about? The, yeah, the, so any referrals could be FS, conveyancing, removals, um, auctions that we do. Uh, it could be uh, use the franchise or do not take a percentage of that you just take a percentage no. of the and what is the percentage of the estate agency turnover 15% uh, we take um, and what do I get for the money apart from what you've already said you get um, a bespoke boutique brand which which okay. is which is operating to very okay. high standards which which should become a leading or award-winning agency because that's one of that it's got to be the most expensive if not one of the most expensive when Lights of Belvoir at 12 plus 1 and, and Martin and Co. at 9 plus 1, 10 plus 1, somewhere around there. Yeah, so it's interesting you use the word expensive. So it's almost like saying, because we charge one of the highest fees in the marketplace, okay. and some people say we're expensive, but if people are getting a much better outcome financially okay. from using us, then, then actually it's expensive not to use us. So, so really, you, you are the, the Stella Artois or the, the Waitrose of, of a state agent's see franchising would that be about right well in the training we put ourselves up against google apple and john lewis as part of our brand recognition and see ourselves like the mcgraw um okay. of agency in the uk really. okay but you've you've been around now for seven years and you've only got six offices whilst all the others have got lots more and okay they started before you but you know if i was a, a franchise what why should i go to you when when all the rage at the moment is the self-employed model well, the trouble is the self-employed... Well, first of all, I'll answer your first question. Why should you come to me? Um, some of the best things took time to create. And the biggest problem we've got in this, in this uh, the world we live in, everyone wants to be big tomorrow and make everything. 
So I think they want to be big yesterday, don't they? Well, they yeah, and they claim to be the best at everything they do, but they're not putting the processes in place to achieve that. <clears throat> so we, so firstly, the fir first reason why I put my family before everything else. So I've got a little boy who's now five, and I've got uh, another boy who's now 11. I've got two stepchildren who are in their late teens now. So um, the last thing I wanted to do was scale up uh, a... a a low quality, low grade business for the sake of having offices over geography. What I'd rather do is enjoy um, working a four day week for the last three years and building a very precise brand which, which is um, deep with quality and then roll that out in a very fast attack um, over the next couple of years really and try and have about 40 franchises in the next few years that's why and does that all over the country or predominantly in the south and southwest a anywhere it, it, my business will work anywhere it will work in Northern Ireland um, Scotland anywhere at all so it belongs um, in the net so how do people contact <coughs> you or find out more information about your franchise off uh, offering yeah so they can they can go to um, our, our website and use contact me or and then get what is your website tell, tell so me. that's www.myersestates.com which is m-e-y-e-r-s estates.com or they can go to my linkedin profile which is mark my just asking really if people are looking for a new start um, and a bit tired of working for somebody and uh, they want to create a nice life balance where there's scalability where potentially they can let someone else run their location and that takes me to your self-employed model the problem is with the self-employed model You've got no legacy at all. So you're like the swag man in Australia who went over there thinking he could take a territory and then realising it all belongs to somebody else. So the day where that agent packs up, you've got no identity. So, so I, don't, I, I do believe in the self-employed agent as a way of building um, a hub business within our franchise network. But the franchisee has the territory. So if a franchisee took Birmingham, for example, they could have 30 self-employed agents but the legacy would belong to the franchisee. And the 30 self-employed agents would be like Swagman sort of, you know, chopping up the, the territory between them, which, which is a good way to build a business, but it's not the most effective way to have a, a life where you're not working as an agent anymore. So if you want to not work as an agent, you need a franchise, you need to then let other people run that franchise, and self-employed agents could do that whilst you're on a boat somewhere doing something else. Um. I've known Mark for a long time now. A lot of people said we should meet up, hence why today. I've been speaking to him now on the internet for a couple of months and always found him very fascinating. He's not paid me a penny to do this video. And in some other videos which are going to be on my YouTube channel, I'm going to get down and find out what he thinks about negotiators, valuers, and the estate agency profession as a whole. But like I said, he's not paid me a penny to do this. Uh, but I think it's important that you come today and give the opportunity to tell people what you're all about. So thank you for your time today, Mark. Yeah, thank you very much.